Okay, we're back. We've got another video and today we're looking at approximating a binomial distribution to a normal distribution. And so here is our question. So we've got a flower company sells roses of which 45% produce yellow flowers. A sample of 240 roses is taken uh, by using a suitable approximation, the normal approximation, uh, find the probability that fewer than 110 roses produce yellow flowers. Okay, so there it is. There's some useful info down the bottom there. You might want to check that out. Uh, but drop this all down, away you go, and we'll catch up in a couple of seconds to go through the solution. Righto, let's get going then. Now, the reason I put this down the bottom here is to help you with, um, you know, when we're approximating to a normal distribution, we've actually got to change a binomial distribution into a normal distribution. So let's start by putting out our binomial distribution. So we'll have X can be approximated binomially, where N is, well, 240, because it's 240 roses, uh, and the probability here was 0 0.45. Now, when you approximate to a normal distribution, when do you do it, right? Well, you do it usually when n is large. That's the first thing, right? So usually when you've got over 50 things in your sample, that's when you want to be approximating to your normal distribution. And the other time is when the probability is quite close to 50% or 0 0.5. Now, in our case, we've obviously got uh, 0 0.45 and our value of n is massive, we're 240. That's way over 50. Now, the reason we do that is because when you've got a really high number for n and you've got uh, a probability close to 0 0.5, if you look at the distribution, it's almost symmetrical. It's quite symmetrical, which is why we can approximate it to a normal distribution. And so when we do approximate it to a normal distribution, we do the following down here. That's why I put it in that yellow box, right? Super important. So let's just move this over here. Now, if you've got this, which is binomially distributed, we can say that it can be normally distributed where the mean is n times p. So we need to do 240 times by 0 0.45 that's going to be 108 and then we need to do the square root of and that is n times p so that's going to be 240 times 0 0.45 again times by 1 minus p this time so times that by 0 0.55 okay oh horrible number uh it comes out as i think 3 root 165 over 5 then you must put a little squared there on the end okay because this is my standard deviation but remember when you write a normal distribution you put the standard deviation squared okay so this is always a good way to put it out so we've laid this all out this is the foundation of solving one of these problems now what do we need to look for well we need to look for the probability that fewer than 110 roses produce yellow flowers so looking for the probability that x is less than 110 now that there would have been for our binomial distribution. We're looking for less than 110. Now, what does that look like? Well, if we've got 240 roses, obviously um, you can say, you know, zero could have been yellow. One could have been yellow, two, etc., etc., etc. What I'm gonna do is focus in on the region around the 110. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put here 109, 110, and 111, and we do one more, 112. So now, a binomial distribution is used to represent things that are discrete, which means that, you know, bang on, 109 could be yellow. You're not gonna get 109.2 being yellow, right? So you're gonna have probability looking like this. Like that there, so fixed at 109, 110, 111, 112. So if we're looking for the probability that X is less than 110, that means we need 109, 108, all the way downwards. We need all of those there, right? So 109 all the way down to zero. We need to find all those probabilities. Now we could do that um, using our calculator, using the binomial CD. But remember what we've done is we've now turned this into a normal distribution, which is used to represent things that are continuous. And so, this here changes very, very slightly. So let's just make a copy of this real quick. There it is. So now for our normal distribution, what happens is because it's continuous, 
the bars have to stretch out because a continuous distribution can have any value. So technically you could have 109.5 or 109.2 or 110.1. So what we've got to do is account for that. So now we're going to stretch these bars out and they go half a unit either side. So let's just have that there and that there. So this value in the middle is actually 109.5. This value here is going to be 110.5. This one here, 111.5. And this one here, 112.5. You get the gist of it. So all the data that was in the 110 group before has now been stretched out a little bit. So it's been pushed some of it down to 109.5 and some of it up to 110.5. Now, remember what we were trying to find. We were trying to find 109 and less. And now you can see that, well, some of the data from the 109 class has been pushed upwards a little bit to 109.5. And so we don't want to lose that data. So we need to actually account for that. So what we need to do is when we're using the normal distribution, we need to look for where X is less than, oh, uh, no, just less than, sorry, 109.5. There we go. Because we need to get all of that data in. And so that there is called your continuity correction. So you always got to do one of those when you're approximating from a binomial to a normal. And so we need to look for this. Now let's make a very, very quick sketch. So this is a normal distribution. And our mean is now 108. We're looking for less than 109.5. So we're looking for all this area to the left over there. So all of this. How are we going to find that? Well, we can use our calculator and we're going to go for the normal CD. So option number seven, normal CD is option number two. What we're going to put in as our lower, our lower is going to be zero. Our upper is going to be 109.5. Our standard deviation is that tricky number over there, right? So enter, enter that in very, very carefully. Uh, so that there's going to be, we'll say three root 165 all over five and our mean is 108 there we go enter it all in and i've got probability there of 0 0.36 big uh five seven seven bam okay and there we go super pleased with that there and there we go so that is how we would uh approximate your binomial to a normal distribution hopefully you've got that correct if not uh, hopefully you know how to get it correct always start by laying out those distributions have the binomial then change it into the normal uh, by using those little formulas i showed you in the yellow box so more coming your way really really soon stay tuned and i'll catch you in another video real soon